The opinions expressed in this show are the views of the host and not necessarily that of WTRW, 94.3 The Talker, or the Bold Gold Media Group. The following presentation is brought to you by the host of the program who is solely responsible for its content. Good afternoon. Welcome to Make a Change. I'm your host, Terry Martin, along with my producer, Tom Jenkins. Good afternoon, Terry. Good afternoon, Tom. Well, this show, which we always say it's all about how to make a change. In every aspect of your life. Yes, and we have a guest on today that can do just that. She can really help anyone make a change. And our guest is Lori Bogadin, owner of Twigs Restaurant. And Lori, in my opinion, is the wow factor. And how do I come up with that? Because what I see with anything that she touches, she gives it such a unique twist. Have you been to her restaurant? Oh, my gosh, many Twigs? times. My wife loves it, loves going up there. Well, yes, and her restaurant is called Twigs, and it's in Tuncanic for anyone who doesn't know. But the restaurant is just one example of what I'm saying of what someone can do. And I said, if, if you have not been there... If anyone listening hasn't been there, not only do they need to go see it, but to top it off, the food is fantastic. However, there's much more to hear from Lori today. And we're going to start now by letting Lori tell us how she got to that point of opening in a restaurant because her journey was not an easy one. So let's begin right from the start, Lori, and Talk about you growing up, and you said you were a hellraiser, so let's just go from there. <laughs> and she glances at me, and the eyebrows go up and down. <laughs> well, I told you, Terry, first I would like to thank you both for having me on. Thank you so much, Terry. This thank is, you for coming. Um, very exciting, uh, and I will say that I am a little bit nervous, so bear with me. When you asked uh, me to come on, I thought, well, boy, we're going to talk about uh, the restaurant and some things like that. I didn't know we were going to get into the what I tell everybody when I meet them later on in, in life uh, that I've known. And it's the, all the stories are true. So basically all the stories are true, Terry. So if, if you hear <laughs> any Tom and Terry, they are. They are absolutely 100% true. We, rural area, I mean, we really just had a, had a very, very good time. Uh, there were um, many parties, many fields. and <laughs> <laughs> where, did, where did you grow up? Outside of the Meshoppin area, South Auburn, oh, okay. Meshoppin area. So up, up in Wyoming that, that County. Time. Wyoming yep. County, yes. And, uh, well, actually, I believe Susquehanna. I believe, oh, that's right. I think we were in right. the, Elk Lake is the, Susquehanna. the famous Susquehanna County. And uh, it was it was a wonderful childhood, but it was when when you got when you got caught up in uh, the ch- uh, teenage drama and and this idea that, um, you know, nothing was going to change. And when you grow up in, in a rural community, uh, I, I felt anyway, and I don't want to speak for anyone else, but I felt that uh, there was little opportunity for for me. I was not that wonderful in school. And we grew up in the same district the same school yes. not the same age but i know where you're coming from too you with the teachers in this the setting it was different and and the, the teachers tended to grab a hold of of some of the students that they felt were were going to succeed and i and i think that that's only human nature you have a short amount of time to develop students and they focused on the good kids. i was not the easiest student to to you know <laughs> steer it into into one one way or the other and i i developed an attitude very very strong attitude that that this was this was kind of it and uh decided that if i if this was going to be it i was going to have a lot of fun doing it and um subsequently uh became a single uh, parent at a very, very young age. And when that took place, it it made me realize that I had to, I had to make a change and I had to make a change fast. Um, I wanted to, 
I decided that I wanted to raise a child that that maybe uh, didn't feel the way I I did, and if I was going to do that, I had to make some very very big changes in my in my life to to raise that child. I like what you told me in the interview when you were you were talking about like the fight and the flight fight or flight response and that now that you you wanted to be able to show your child how to desire a better life and how to seek a better life. I think any situation um, that that you find yourself in, you take on that that fight or flight mentality and. there were very, a lot of choices. Well, not a lot, but there were several other choices I could have made at that at that time, and uh, chose not to. And if I chose not to, I, I took that very seriously. I, I took it. I took everything very seriously. You know, even the partying was a very serious <laughs> matter at the time. Um, things change. You grow up, and, New and ball you're game. Not, that's right. You're you're not the same. You're not the same person. And I didn't want, you know. To, to bring a child up in that in that atmosphere, which was very, at the time, could have very well happened very, very easily. And uh, decided that within doing that, m- many things had to change. And uh, you said that your parents were really very supportive because there's a lot of girls out there listening right now that are in that situation. And so that's why you're on the show today to help anyone with all well, the different th- situations think, you'll be talking about. I think what's really, really nice about being able to talk about this now is there's such a wide range, of, a wide scope of, of age, ages that I've gone through now that um, lends itself. To all the different experiences in every age group as they're growing up. Well, and when you were talking to me about uh, your mother and your father your whole family helping so much that you also turned to church and that you had such a good support that even if somebody doesn't have well and that's and that's a big that's a big um a a big factor in it was the support system that i had but it doesn't matter if if that comes from your family if it comes from uh, your your peers if that comes from um work related church uh i really tried to put as many people around me at the time that I that I thought would be able to support me in a different lifestyle uh than than that of of my peers and and partying the thing was was at that time once I once I had um my son Friends were already off to college. People were, you know, living their lives, dating, getting married, buying home, you know, doing that. And I had a whole different set of, of circumstances and problems at that time. Um, not only trying to, you know, straighten my own life out, but raising another one at the same time. And uh, that that's a difficult that's a difficult um, transition. But I think that that fight mode and i and i i can't come up with a different word for it because it's not it wasn't a struggle or a fight um it was something i wanted so when i say that i'm i say that with all um the emotion of um wanting something so bad um not so much a difficult situation it was it was easy in the sense that i wanted it and that goes into then other things in, in my life, um, starting a business and, um, you know, adopting the girls. We adopted three girls. Since then. And but I, I that, just, okay, go ahead. that strong, that strong desire to to want to succeed. And, and you and I talked about, Terry, the, you know, these books out there talk to to people about manifesting and they make it sound so easy you know i oh, i boy i wish i had more money and you open the mailbox and checks are just kind of flowing out of the, the mailbox people create and what they what they think and what they believe uh so and you had to learn really quick to 
create and manifest some things that you wanted. But I, I just want to go back to part mm-hmm. of the story that you told me. I thought it was very funny in a way <laughs> that your mom was very strong. And when you were talking about all of your friends going back to college and one night they invited you, why don't you just tell that well, was the- really funny. There, there's been life lessons along along the road, and and uh, one being that when after I had had Ryan, um, friends of mine, uh, probably about six months after I had had him, called and were like, "Come out, let's go, we're partying," and that was still going on, and it was, you know, I I have to say I miss I missed it, and um, went to my mother and and just assumed that she would would watch. Ryan and she, she so you could go party so, and, and she said no she said you know you made this decision you've got to follow through with this and no I will watch him when I say that I will watch him and I mean I was just devastated it was I, I couldn't even understand why you know my mother wouldn't do this but she taught me a very a very big lesson in that when you make a decision and you you have to follow through on it and that was it was not her responsibility um i think for mothers listening right now it's so hard that so many mothers are in that situation with their daughters and they they want them to still be young i think and be able to go out and have somewhat of a good time but it's hard to put their foot down and that's what we really need to do if this is the situation and you're saying that she did that, and she that was so good for you. Me. She allowed me to grow up, and and I really and that was something I really needed at the time was to to grow up and take on the responsibilities that I had chosen. And had she not had she not, you know, said no at that time, um, I think I would have probably used and abused that. Right. For a long, for a long time. She so. knew the difference between helping and enabling. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And and back into the, the manifestation part of it, you know, I, I could see what I, what I wanted and what I desired. It was not that it was easy. I just knew that I, the outcome that I wanted was, was a good life for, for me and my child, not, not just Ryan, but myself also at that point, you know, I realized you know, you can't you can't continue to do that. For I like hours. the examples you gave too, though. You said uh, once you made the decision, and you discovered how to manifest. Now, this isn't something like out in the that you're pulling in from magic. What you said is, it's not like a your example is it like a diamond ring that appears suddenly, or there's this check in the mailbox, and it isn't a wish that just comes to you. You had to work hard. You have to work if if you know goals and desires and dreams dreams are that they are just that they are dreams and once you decide that you're going to work hard at that then it's a goal and until you work hard at it until you understand that it's 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 going to take some you know and and you also said hard work to to get that accomplished yeah and and you said also that you wanted to set such a good example for your son that you wouldn't take welfare and I know that it isn't it wasn't any easier then I'm sure for you than it is for anyone right now but you wanted to set an example so and you didn't have an education of college you went for a short period of time but it was hard because all those things that would come along with graduating and and get, going out and and learning to grow up a, a, a little bit slower I didn't I didn't have the opportunity to do and I don't I'm not saying don't you know go for help when you need help in in that way but I I chose to take on a job that didn't allow me to to be able to take um you know have the system work help me and um chose not to but that was also difficult because there was not a lot of money at, at then at that time and you there, took a couple jobs on at at a time even in real estate i did probably i worked one full-time job that i had gotten and then usually about two part-time to to take care of of everything um my car i had to stop every so often 
more often than not and put um, steering fluid in because the steering fluid would leak out. You know, I mean, it was, it was, yeah, it was a, it was a difficult time. Well, this is a great spot to take a quick little break. Mm-hmm. We're talking with uh, Lori Bogadin from Twigs Restaurant at Tunkanic. And uh, let's make a change with your host, Terry Martin. I am Tom Jenkins on 94.3 FM The Talker. We'll be right back. Confidence. It's something we all search for. It's something we all strive for. When we're confident, we feel we can accomplish anything. And think about it. When you knew you looked good, you walked with your head held a little higher. Looking people in the eye was easy. You felt like you could tackle the world. The first step in finding that confidence is obviously how you look. And when you look good on the outside, you feel good on the inside. Get that confidence you need with Madari Clinicals. They are a unique skincare company that specializes in complete skincare for women and men. From anti-aging to glycolic and even a special clinical line for sensitive skin, Madari Clinicals gives you that confidence. Make that change. Look brand new. Feel brand new with Madari Clinicals. Check out MadariClinicals.com. That's M-E-D-E-R-I Clinicals.com. Or call 866-646-3374. Take on the world with Madari Clinicals. And we're back on Make a Change on 94.3 FM, The Talker. Terry Martin is your host. I am Tom Jenkins. And in the studio with us today, special guest, Lori Boganin from Twigs Restaurant in Tunkanic. Lori, thanks again for coming and doing the show with us today. Definitely appreciate it. Thank you. We were uh, we were talking last segment about, you know, how you were, uh, you know, the, living in the, the rural communities up in the uh, Tunkanic, Susquehanna area. And, uh, you know, lots of partying because not much else going on up there. <laughs> and, and you thought that was it. And... Until you ended up getting pregnant at a young age. Where you are today compared to back then, I mean, just getting pregnant didn't just flip the switch and make, all right, you know what? I got to straighten up, fly right. I'm going to grow up and I'm going to go do this now. And then psh, and off you go. I, I, I Well, if it, if it was, <laughs> God bless you, because I don't know anybody that could have done that in, a, in a, just a flip of a switch. What was the transition like? How, how did, you know, the, the, the trials, tribulations, what, what was going on? I think um, the the turning point first for me came with the realization that I had somebody else to take care of. And, okay. and I, I have always told Ryan um, that, uh, I mean, he basically, I think, saved my life, you know, and, I, and I'm not saying go out if you're having a difficult time and, you know, have a child to, right. to make things better. <laughs> yeah, that's because not a solution it, to the exactly, problem. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but it for for me, it was a, a life changing in my in my attitude um, within having Ryan um, and, and joining the church and, and really trying to introduce some some healthy different ways of, of living. You had to change. Yeah, exactly. You had to make changes. Um, I ended up having a very uh, interesting experience that we'll, ex- we'll talk about later. And I, the, the experience really taught me that you have to look at things so much differently all the time, that there's not any set way to see a situation um, that you you really need to see that that whatever your reality is that your core belief of your reality is i don't want to say an illusion could be it could be a delusion i think i know where you're going because terry and i talk about this a lot and and one of the things we say on the show a lot is that when you change the way you look at things the things you look at change change. so what you're seeing is what you're seeing but it might not be the truth it could be a delusion exactly and if you were if you were not comfortable with what you're seeing or you're not comfortable with your story or your story is not um, propelling you or, or getting you where you want to go, change the wording of your story, change that. And that rea- you know, you're, you're everything can be looked at from different exactly, angles. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And, um, I, I, you know, Terry and I talked about, you know, you don't want to, I don't want to dismiss people's, um, struggles or their, their hardships. And certainly there are, are, you know, some really terrible things that are happening or have happened to, to people, but you are responsible for how you look at that and, and how you feel about it. You know, it. yes. And I think mm-hmm. once you get to a place that you can look at it differently, like in, in Tom, just like you said, that that changes. That. Right. And you couldn't blame other people, you know, for 
your childhood or the decisions you made oh, or having a child now. Not. And that's absolutely. where I think some people get in that trap. It, they, they don't take, like you said, responsibility. And your life can really change once you know that you're responsible for you. There's a turning point, And I read, there's, I didn't even read it somewhere, but there's an age that, that you go from the world is, you are the center of the, the universe to, oh my goodness, there are other people and <laughs> they believe they are the center of the universe. I remember um, very, very young in bed and my mother made popcorn, my mother. She was my, my teacher. Yes. Uh, and I thought, how could she, you know, make popcorn without us? I mean, popcorn was the family, like, bonding time popcorn, <laughs> right? And, um, you know, she was had the audacity to make popcorn without me. And... It was how that, dare how dare her? And that was that, re, you know, I realized then that she had a life outside of me, that there was, that I was not. And, and I think there's growing times that help you to see that. And this experience that I had at the time was, was one of them. And um, very profoundly showed me that you need to really change. If you don't rewrite whatever you, you don't like, rewrite it, just change you need to well before this experience that you're going to talk about you said that you were because you were trying so hard to change your life that you you were praying very hard and when you told me your story yesterday I was thinking about it last night and I was thinking how Tom told me one time when I didn't think I had an answer that yes indeed I did have an answer God gave me the answer and this experience that we're you know, building up everyone's uh, interest and questioning about what happened. And, you know, I just want to say it was a life, death, experience type it, thing that can't even be explained. And I know you'll explain that more in detail, but maybe you did get the answer that day through that. It was a very spiritual experience it, it um we're uh, i will use and terry now? you will use god as uh, the wording that we'll use and but it could it could be anything it, it, um the creator of all i mean whatever you believe um is the source of of everything um it doesn't god just happens to be a very easy word to use for that i like using the word something something the something of it all <laughs> and uh it 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 well it depends on you terry would you like would you like me to talk about it well i think so because there that that made so many drastic changes in your life and and uh this is just one of those stories that i'm sure many people listening have probably had something similar and so this isn't so outlandish that it's not believable. But not to ahead. mention the fact you had said it, I think you said it twice already, a turning point, a turning point. And, and, and just like Terry said, I think we all as human beings need to get to some sort of turning point. A turning point. And, and hopefully maybe if they hear your turning point, someone can go, holy crap, that's uh, I, 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 that's almost the same as me. Maybe I, I, I got it. So we'd love to hear that. Absolutely. It, it started, it was... Um, Ryan was very young and I had been very much looking for, um, you know, some positive, positive, um, reinforcement. Yes. In, in, in my life. And, and yes, Terry, very much praying, you know, what, what is this? What am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to do this? And, you know, I need, I need help. I need guidance. I need, I need some type of, um, answers, uh, Even as to pay your bills, beyond everything. myself, that I, you know, and I had ended up uh, falling asleep. The only thing I can describe it as was a near death experience, and for years that that was all I I could um, equate it to uh, was was that. Um, however, I know I had just fallen asleep, but it was more real than than any dream. It was more real than this lifetime. And what happened when I fell asleep was I was shown a very, very horrible, horrible um, existence, which was um, almost after the world, I, I assumed, would look like after the world would maybe be um, end or... Kind of like hell. A catastrophe or, yes, hell. 
and um, I, it was very hot, very um, desolate, uh, mounds everywhere that people lived in, and um, I just really wanted, I needed help there. I, I, I couldn't understand why I was there, and I, I almost was like, well, yeah, I have to change, because if this is where I'm going, boy, oh, you know, if I'm going to pray and this is what I'm being shown, I, you know, I really need to make some changes. You know what shocked me? You said you could hear and feel the hatred there. Oh, it was, it was very it. much... Um, very much uh, it was real it was it was real and and it was so heavy with uh, hatred and and um, annoyance that I was there and you talked about the time too it seemed like it was centuries now this part of the this part of it happened very very quickly Um, I although it was so horrible that only a few seconds was really all anybody would need to know that you didn't want this re- this to be a reality ever in any way, shape, or form. And uh, in within the experience, um, I remember being like, "Well, okay, I'm I'm out of here. If you know, if I can get out of here, get me out of here because <laughs> I, you know, I all right, I'll change, I'll change." <laughs> and um, as soon as I did that, I was in a different in a different situation and standing in um, what happened to look like a tunnel that um, rounded in and around itself for years all I could describe it to anybody as was um, like uh, the biggest cat toy in the whole world Um, the the kind that the cats will like bat the ball around Mm -hmm. and they can only see it from the from the um, outside of it and it rolls around and around and I was just a, a speck within this this um, cavernous um, cat, cat toy I, I think I know now what it was that I was in however I was looking out into this um, fantastic fabulous blue it was a blue that I, I mean I can't even describe to anybody um, to this day and had the sensation or the feeling that I had been standing there for for centuries or decades or years, maybe it was seconds. I didn't know it was like time had no meaning at at this at this point. Out into the blue that I looked out into, there were um, stars, uh, but I knew that they weren't stars because I wasn't looking up at them. They were all um, like going by this, like they were on a screen in this these looking out this. Uh, these portals or these this this window that was the outside of the cat toy uh and they all were moving in in the in one direction however some were moving very fast and were very bright some were dim and hardly moving at all there were some that i mean i didn't even think were moving at all and i could barely even and make out um and i had been there again i i don't know how long And I remember thinking to myself, well, what am I looking at? And the moment I thought that, I thought to myself, well, boy, why didn't I think that sooner? Why didn't I think at all? I mean, it it was it was a very strange um, feeling. After I had thought that um, three beings, I don't want to say that they were angels, because I don't know what they were and I couldn't quite see them. I had to, to look at them through the, the corner of my eye. Um, if I looked straight on or if I tried to see them in a different way, I, I couldn't. So I continued to just look at the, the beautifulness of the, of the blue and these, these um, stars or, or lights that kind of were going by. But we could, we could kind of communicate in a way. And... Um, I remember asking, what, what am I looking at? And I was told that what I'm looking at, what I was looking at were the, the light of the souls, for a be- lack of a better word, because right. that's not the word that they used, but of everything. And um, it wasn't just human beings. It was, I mean, absolutely everything. Um, animals, flowers, trees, rocks. I mean, everything, I was told, goes back to, to source. And that some of the the lights had um, in their light in in I don't even want to say lifetime, but it had cleared a path to get to source much much faster. 
and others had had not had um, become at- so attached to either life um, and and could not get out of that repetitiveness of of materialness and life, and that others were so attached to the idea of death that they didn't even couldn't even comprehend that there was anything beyond death. Um, some of the lights that didn't move at all um, were were in fear of judgment. They were just so f- afraid of what they had had um, accomplished in their life. They were so afraid of that that they couldn't move on. And my my first initial thought in in that was, you know, souls like Hitler and like how does that fit in if everything goes back to source. And it was explained to me that everybody has to come to a re- realization that what we are is love. And until you come to that realization, until every soul or everything comes to that, it doesn't it doesn't move on, or it doesn't move on as fast. I mean, everything eventually gets back to source. It just depends on how long that takes. I can associate takes. that with human beings and what we see. I can see that. And um, there was uh, the 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 idea of the blue, and it wasn't even an idea. I, I say that the the blue that I saw. It was explained to me that source is what we all aim to get back to. The blue is is an unconditional love that holds us. So the only thing visually that I could ex- have explain it to anybody would be the loving arms of God, um, to use that expression again. That the blue was totally one hundred percent unconditional love. It supported everything, but didn't judge it. It didn't say, oh, um, Lori, you know, you were a teenage mother. Um, you did this, this and that. Therefore, I'm not going to hold you. You know, you, you fall to the abyss of, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it held everything and it held it with no judgments and, and no, no idea, uh, no expectations of, of anything. But within that, that light, we need to find our our joy and our happiness and and know that we are love and that not only are we loved but we're loved and um we need to give give back and i think that's why other people understand that that's that's all that matters our guest today is Lori bogadin from twigs restaurant in tonkanic this is make a change on 94.3 fm the talker and we'll be back right after this Confidence. It's something we all search for. It's something we all strive for. When we're confident, we feel we can accomplish anything. I mean, think about it. When you knew you looked good, you walked with your head held a little higher. Looking people in the eye was easy. You felt like you could tackle the world. The first step in finding that confidence is obviously how you look. And when you look good on the outside, you feel good on the inside. Get that confidence you need with Medary Clinicals. They are a unique skincare company that specializes in complete skincare for women and men. From anti aging to glycolic and even a special clinical line for sensitive skin, Medary Clinicals gives you that confidence. Make that change. Look brand new. Feel brand new with Medary Clinicals. Check out MedaryClinicals.com. That's M E D E R I Clinicals.com or call 866 646 3374. Take on the world with Medary Clinicals. Welcome back to Make a Change on 94.3 FM, The Talker. I'm Tom Jenkins, along with your host, Terry Martin. The show's all about making changes in our lives, in every aspect of our lives, uh, whether it comes spiritually, religiously, family-wise, health-wise, weight-wise. You know, we try to talk about any which way you can to make a change. And our special guest today is Lori Boganin from Twigs Restaurant, owner of Twigs Restaurant in Tonkanic. Great restaurant, by the way. And uh, she, she was just telling us about... She referred to it as a, as a near-death experience. It's the only way she could really come up with the explanation. 
it was more than a dream. It, more than a vision. I mean, we're, we're you have to understand this is radio and we're watching Lori try to explain this and her eyes are up, down, left, right, hands going. She's trying so hard to explain this vision. And during the break, she had said that she just it's so hard to explain what you saw. It is of it's beyond it's it's an experience that is beyond words. Uh, and I had listened to a a book once that explained their experience as if if we had never been if the human race had never been born with eyes we would have gone and tried to explain everything from what we heard well if one day then you woke up and you could see things you would try to explain those things by by sounds and you know colors with sounds and and butterflies with sound you you wouldn't have any type of a um, language base to explain things visually okay. because all we would have been able to do was to hear things. And I thought that was really um, insightful because when you have an experience like this, to try to explain it in words is so hard and, and can almost sometimes sound a little far-fetched. And one of the things that I wanted to, to say is what, what this experience did for me was sh it showed me that there might possibly be another reality than what we, we have come to, to think of as a reality. And... If that's the case, everything we look at is is can be changed and and different. If if what we are is loved and we're held within that that love, we can basically change or create anything. If that if that well, I think makes you showed sense. that you did change and create different after that dream or after whatever that was, because then it takes you into. Where about that time or a little short time after you met your husband and you started to do a lot and of that, the positive things. I, right. And that and that all also um, what it did, what it did for me was was it showed me that there is unconditional love and that everyone is held within that Um it didn't take away, I mean, I, uh, overnight, nothing happened overnight. Nothing was, you know, my life didn't suddenly become wonderful. I wasn't suddenly rich or beautiful or anything like that, <laughs> unfortunately. But, uh, yes, it, it opened up doors to to the possibility that anything is possible. I guess that's what I'm mm -hmm. trying to say, that that we're, we're not stuck in one place. We, we sometimes aren't even who we, we think we are. We can be better. Um, if we strive to be and uh, that fight or flight mode went into everything then that that I did I, I didn't I saw it as a challenge I saw it as something that I wanted to accomplish and and do and and um, work hard to to create it it was a um, an experience that I like I said a very very hard to did you did you have your son when you had this experience? Yes. Yeah. Yes. How do you remember how old he was? I want to say that he was under the age of two, and he may have been even under the age of one. I'm not. I'm not. A, I can't quite remember exactly. And and again, it doesn't mean that my life has been you know totally. I mean, I have made mistakes. We all, you, human. you know, and I and and there's you know there's we're, we are only human at at this point but and then I and it also not only did it, it show me a, a, more about myself I was more able to look at other people and um, and see that that they were they, they, they had, a, they, had a, <laughs> they had a depth you know again I, I, I woke I came out of that it's all about Lori mode um, and look to, to look at other people and we had talked yesterday Terry about um, I did this um, little experiment where I just smiled at other women because it you know when you're 
a young woman, the, the women, man, we're tough. We're just, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. we have it all going on and, you know, we're not going to let any, you know, we get that um, cat thing kind of going on with the, <laughs> with other women. Uh, so I, I thought, well, I'm just going to smile at them. And nine times out of 10, the whole thing changed to a, a nice smile. And we, you know, um, we went about our day. Men do it. Men do it. You know, they tip their hat. They handshake. They they say hello. Women go, you know, <laughs> to another woman. Right. <laughs> uh, we were standing in line. My husband and I. This was um, years later. And it was maybe in my late 20s, early 30s. And the girl behind the counter was just, I mean, drop dead gorgeous, uncomfortably gorgeous when you're at, the, <laughs> at that age and your husband's standing there with you. Mm-hmm. And um, she had an air about her that was quite, you know, I took it as she knew that she was very much, you know, drop dead gorgeous. Mm-hmm. And um, I thought, you know, the heck with this, her hair is really cute. So I said, oh my gosh, I said, I love your hair. Your hair is just really nice. And she stopped and she looked at me and she said, oh my gosh, she said, are you serious? She said, I just got a cut yesterday and I hate it. She's like, I just don't even know, you know. And I had taken her, uh, the her whole um, demeanor as being very self-centered and here mm-hmm. it was she just was nervous about her hair which was really cute you know mm-hmm. and so we got into this the big conversation about hair and style and my you know and my husband's like oh god so you know it took that whole <laughs> the well whole, they do say that women dress for other women because men yes. really don't pay that much attention to what we're wearing no. but another woman will look at us you know another yeah. woman from head to toe is everything perfect and exactly. and that's exactly we don't realize that so, that's who we're trying to say i equal or i measure up so other people's other people's um story really came to the forefront because those were the lights that i was looking at and everybody's is is different and um I wondered what it would have been like to be in somebody else's looking at mine. I wondered, I still wonder what, you know, how bright or dim mm-hmm. <laughs> my light is out there, you know. And uh, that that idea that, you know, giving back to people and, and um, being kind and nice and, and just the golden rule of, of, you know, how do you want to be treated? So, so hey, through- we, we had said something during the break uh, about judging. You know, and for for all these years, you know, as we go through life, we look at people and this is almost exactly what you were talking about, Lori. We judge them externally. Just what we think we see back to those delusions that we were talking Mm -hmm. about earlier, that this is our world. You know, I am the center of my universe until and and what it sounds like to me. And if I'm if I'm wrong, please correct me that those lights that you were seeing is not the external of individuals. It was more the internal. It's the so exactly no exa- you exactly it's that um i sense have i think i would have told more people the, this story and there were only a select few that have heard the story up to this point yeah, not about a million so <laughs> <laughs> but uh because of the cat toy wording i had no other for this this thing that kind of wrapped around itself since then, I, I've done so much um, studying and investigating to, to, to try to explain what it was that had happened to me. And, and quite frankly, to feel that again, um, which I, I have not to that extent, but to understand it more. And what I, have, um, what I discovered was that everything, um, the sun, I guess, is one of the biggest uh, for our universe that we know it is got what's called a torus and the energy goes down in and out and around and they found they have they are finding now that everything has that um ourselves included and it um extends probably about arm's length and it accounts for um if somebody comes into your space you know you kind of back out you know if that when once those those um our, energy our, fields uh, inter intermix aura um the taurus because it's like a donut shaped i believe that i was standing within my own energy field looking at out at everyone else's and um you know we say what can we do to change the world what can we do you know i'm only one person i can't i can't there's nothing that i can do if you change 
that energy field, that aura that's around you to a more positive energy, you can't help but affect the person you're passing. You can't help but, uh, um, you know, energize a room when you come into it. You Everybody understands that. Um, have been in the situation where you've walked into a room uh, and the people have been were fighting. The couple was fight were, were fighting before you walked in, and you walk into this room and it's it's like oh yeah. you could feel the tension yeah, yeah. you could tell so you know if you change that that um, to a more positive around yourself it it affects I think all that other energy around here you. comes the 10 million dollar question how how do you do that how did you do it darn that's a good question <laughs> uh, no i think it's just that awareness again it's looking at things differently um we go right down to the time of i am now 50 this was many many years ago and i remember the experience isn't that something i remember the experience um, visually m more than I do with the age of my son. It, it was that real mm -hmm. to, to me. And um, when Terry asked me to do the show, I thought, well, I have nothing to offer this. I'm in a really, I was at the time in a very, I don't want to say dark place, but it, I was in a time in my life right now where um, I don't have um, the struggles that I had. I don't have an obstacle right now to battle. And, and, you know, that was a very unnerving place to be. It was a very tough place to be until I looked at it as an opportunity. Instead of seeing, well, I have nothing right now going on. I have nothing going on that I could fill with just about anything that I wanted to fill it with. And, and just looking at it differently like that. Now it's exciting and wonderful. Where are you going hey, with it? Right. Well, and that, well, I'll have to do another show once I figure, <laughs> well, so I figured that but, out. But some of it we have left out because what we left out was you got married and then you had... You adopted, oh, which I didn't even know. You adopted three girls. I mean, um, look what you've done. A wonderful husband. Um, we've been married for, uh, we were married in 1990, so I can't, I don't know. Um, <laughs> Math is hard. <laughs> yeah, right? And um, successful business. I mean, the restaurants don't, you know, they're, they're tough to, to get off the ground. We adopted three wonderful girls, which uh, was a delight and a, a very difficult all in the At same. At what ages were they when you adopted them? Um, they were 12, 11, and 9 when we got them. And um, they, the Sisters. girls, um, two biological. They were all from the same um, um, children's home in, in Russia. It was when Russia opened the doors for a little while and allowed um, some adoptions to go through. Did you, did you adopt all three of them all at once? Yes. <sighs> <laughs> God bless you. Wow. Well, listen, this is a great time to take one more quick break. When we come back, I want to hear all about today. What's going on with you today? How you've used that turning point in your life to continue to do what you're doing today. All right. I'll give you a little, little prep time here. This is Make a Change with your host, Terry Martin. I am Tom Jenkins. And our special guest is Lori Boganin from Twigs Restaurant in Tunkanic with just an amazing visual experience that, uh, well, Go to Terry's webpage, MadariClinicals.com, and, and listen to the show again because it's just, it's fantastic. We will be right back on 94.3 FM, The Talker. Confidence. It's something we all search for. It's something we all strive for. When we're confident, we feel we can accomplish anything. I mean, think about it. When you knew you looked good, you walked with your head held a little higher. Looking people in the eye was easy. You felt like you could tackle the world. The first step in finding that confidence is obviously how you look. And when you look good on the outside, you feel good on the inside. Get that confidence you need with Medary Clinicals. They are a unique skincare company that specializes in complete skincare for women and men. From anti aging to glycolic and even a special clinical line for sensitive skin, Medary Clinicals gives you that confidence. Make that change. Look brand new. Feel brand new with Medary Clinicals. Check out MedariClinicals.com. That's M-E-D-E-R-I Clinicals.com. Or call 866-646-3374. Take on the world with Medari Clinicals. 
Welcome back to Make a Change on 94.3 FM, The Talker. Your host, Terry Martin. I am Tom Jenkins. And uh, we've been completely neglecting Terry's webpage and her phone number. like we, <laughs> <laughs> Because just with our special guest today, Lori Bogan, and from Twig's Restaurant in Tunkhannock. Uh, it's just a, an enthralling story. Um, but if, if you do have any questions for Terry, you know, feel free to give her a call at 866-646-3374. Or check out MaderiClinicals.com. That's M-E-D-E-R-I, MaderiClinicals.com. Now, back to Lori. Because I want to hear what's all about going on today with with this. Uh, I don't, again, still really don't have a definition of what you can call this experience that you had, except for like a turning point in your life and, and this this visual experience that you had. But uh, where are you today? What are you doing today with all the changes that you've made, what you've learned from this experience and, and going through the years with adopting and all of that? What What's going on in your life today? One thing that um, I wanted to add to to that is the um the the idea that you don't have to have an experience like this to change how you how you look at at things um and i've right now being blessed at at being 50 um which a lot of people don't know either so <laughs> we'll we'll try to you can cut that out out of the whole thing tom <laughs> for the right amount of money yes um, yes i can <laughs> that um I, w- I had been looking at this time in my life, which some people might call a midlife crisis or, or that type of thing, as mm-hmm. what, what is my next struggle? What is my next? It was an un- it, I, it was an uncomfortable place to be, Almost not looking- having an obstacle or a hurdle to, to, oh, okay. to so, battle into. No battles. Yeah. And um, I had grown very good at that, at, at just, you know, Handling battling battles. through. Working and, and under pressure. You know, right. Mm-hmm. And knowing that I had to really work hard to get things and the place that I'm in now. And I want everybody to know if, if you were um, in this place in your life um, to, to, and like you had said, Tom, to kind of sit back and look at it differently. I look at it now as, as an opportunity to help. I can do anything. I can do anything at this point instead of um, focusing on, on, on what the struggle is. Let's, let's find out what's, what's out there. Terry, you had um, offered uh, a nice meditative um, technique, which is just sit, you know, clear your mind, relax, and and, and just write what, what comes to you. And a couple of things that came to me that Terry was nice enough to bring well, along. She sent with me this her. email, and it was so good. I, I copied it down, and I said, I think you should read it on air today. For everyone, because... You do realize Lori is never going to come back here again because we have completely <laughs> ambushed her in every aspect of her now life. Now that every girl email that knows me knows everything. <laughs> Even my age, there's been a lot of people that have asked that, so... Um, nobody realizes, uh, or I, there have been a lot of people who have wanted to know my age, and I have to say that it is Terry's um, makeup that has uh, helped cover... Many imperfections. Thank you, Terry. <laughs> but what I what I came what I came up with when I sat down and did that was you have the power to do anything you put your mind to, um, but don't try to do it alone. And I, I thought that that was I, and I think that goes to anybody. And I think it was it, speaking to me in 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 saying you or you. You know, you you really have the power to do anything you want to do. Um, if you can create it, you can do it. Just depends on how bad you want it, how much you want to work for. But don't think you have to do it alone. Whether that's a support system physically, or it's a support system, it's your, it's the person or the the or the person the the you know who you pray to. Um, you don't have to do it a- alone. And it, I wrote down also where passion grows, so does joy. Um, find it and live it. Uh, and don't live through others. You need to find find where your joy is. And, you know, if, if you're at a job that you don't like or you're at um, a time in your life or a position in your life that you don't like, find the joy that, that, do, that find the things that do make you happy and focus on that. Um, work hard at, at what does make you happy and, and, bring, and brings you joy. She keeps saying work because nothing comes without working. Yeah, that's it. And I, yeah, it does. And you're right. Mm-hmm. You're right. And, and um, like I said, it just depends on how bad you want it, how hard you want to work for it. Could you elaborate more? I think, and again, correct me if I'm wrong. You said don't live through others. Don't don't live your life through others. Don't. Um, uh, we, 
I could have lived my life through my son. Um, I could have lived, um, I could live my life through my husband. You know, what, what he feels is, is important or he, and I mean, I think we do to a certain degree have to do that, but don't make it your soul. Don't make what, how, what their accomplishments, your joy, find your joy. Right. We're all here for a reason. You know, and what your, is it? <laughs> what, what makes, what you're passionate about and, and spend as much time as you can on that once you once you find that I mean if it's reading a book or music I mean it doesn't it could be whatever it doesn't have to be so tell us about twigs how did how did twigs come about we purchased a building in Tunkhannock um, where twigs is at right now and um, it was had become a very bad um, kind of an eyesore in town it was vacant it had a little spot that was undercover that the, not undercover but uh, that was took you out of the the, um, the weather. Kids had decided that that's where they were going to kind of hang out and garbage and, you know, weeds were growing up. So once we purchased the building, we, we tried to decide, you know, well, what could we do with it? And we, of course, make some money at, at doing it. Sure. And we decided that we would... It was a very, very interesting building. So I, we thought it lent itself very nicely to, to restaurants. So that was... And how long has Twigs been open now? We opened in 1999, so it's wow. been. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> math, is, math is hard. Is hard. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, it is. Well, it's Twigs Restaurant. The address, actual address, is. Um, one East Tioga Street in Tunkana. It's right, right there on the main drag, yes. right on the corner. You can't miss that. Our, our guest today has been Lori Bogadin, uh, owner of Twigs Restaurant, which I now that I know you a little bit better, Lori, and so does everybody else. <laughs> uh, she's the owner of a restaurant. Eh, so what? That other experience. She was in a cat toy. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I just, I, I love your philosophy on, on, on on everything you know um there were there were two things as as i was listening you said it twice i was stuck i felt stuck you know the first was when you were a little girl you're or not that little but you know growing up and doing all the party and mm-hmm. and this was it i'm stuck you know this is what we're gonna do and then blam something happened you know pregnancy oh i better get unstuck mm-hmm. i better uh, so you got off your butt and you did something about mm-hmm. it and then uh well then you were stuck again and then this vision came to you and you saw that and and I just, I, I, I don't know, I, I can't describe exactly how I feel about what you can't describe either. You know, it's, I, I, I understand where you're coming from, though. Um, but uh, if you want to listen to the show again, you know, I strongly recommend it. You go over to MadariClinicals.com and uh, she, Terry's got all the shows archived there. Uh, can you do a YouTube search? Yes, you can. Go for, to Terry Martin mm-hmm. and then make a change and all the shows are there. Awesome. 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 Lori, thank you so much. And thank you. For coming on the show today. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Lori. And sharing this, and uh, whether you want to hear it or not, is exactly what I needed to hear oh, this afternoon. You. So <laughs> I am Tom Jenkins, your host, Terry Martin. This is Make a Change. Uh, 866-646-3374 is Terry's number. And uh, we'll talk to you again next week on Make a Change on 94.3 FM, The Talker. Thanks. Confidence. It's something we all search for. It's something we all strive for. When we're confident, we feel we can accomplish anything. I mean, think about it. When you knew you looked good, you walked with your head held a little higher. Looking people in the eye was easy. You felt like you could tackle the world. The first step in finding that confidence is obviously how you look. And when you look good on the outside, you feel good on the inside. Get that confidence you need with Madari Clinicals. They are a unique skincare company that specializes in complete skincare for women and men. From anti aging to glycolic and even a special clinical line for sensitive skin, Medary Clinicals gives you that confidence. Make that change. Look brand new. Feel brand new with Medary Clinicals. Check out MedaryClinicals.com. That's M E D E R I Clinicals.com or call 866 646 3374. Take on the world with Madari Clinicals. The new Radio Bold app for iPhone and Android. Download it now and hear all of your favorite stations and formats. Rock, country, classic hits, top 40, news, sports, talk, and more. And more.
look back into the station playlists, play videos of your favorite songs, get artist bios, album artwork, song lyrics, share station and artist information with your friends. Have it all in the palm of your hands. The biggest thing to happen in radio, well, since radio. Download the free Radio Bold app now from your Apple or Android app store. Discover radio like never before. Hear it and see it. Tune in. Hear more. Radiobold.com. Radio Bold. Radio without borders. Learn more at Radiobold.com. 